Hello friends, this is Communication 17003. Thank you for watching. Well, 2017 has gotten off to that uncertain start that I, I mentioned in earlier this year. And for those, of the, for those of us fortunate enough to live in affluent societies, well, most of us haven't been directly touched by recent events, and we've all become more aware of what is going on around us, and especially when violence and chaos strike closer and closer to our home, we get a little bit more worried. Well, I believe that everyone is being affected, whether we realize it or not, and mankind's business-as-usual approach is no longer a reliable strategy that we can count on. Living in the most remarkable period of civilization that humanity has ever experienced, it's hard to imagine that conditions in society could radically change and change quickly. Yet, when the superpowers creep closer and closer to confrontations, when global financial interests experiment with everyone's well-being and with their future, and when our governments take overt actions to limit our freedoms, especially the freedom of speech and the freedom of dissent, it is hard to be overly optimistic about the future. And even though there have been some remarkable technological developments that are contributing to raising the, the standard of living and the state of society all over the place, they seem in some ways almost significant in the backdrop of the coming conflicts and chaos and repression that we're hearing about. As I mentioned in an earlier communication, and, and I truly believe this, if we lose faith in our institutions and in our leaders and our governments, where do we turn and, and what do we do? I also believe that as long as we have art, we still have a chance. Now, I'm sure that statement may seem strange and indeed very idealistic to many of you. I mean, after all, art has been commoditized to a large extent by the same elite sectors of our society that are behind much of the turmoil. Consequently, art's important role in society today is much less appreciated than in previous times. However, throughout history, art has played a significant role in human affairs, and it is now up to artists to help get us through these chaotic times that we have entered. So, I would like to share another quote by the British art historian, Sir Herbert Reed. He writes in his book, The Meaning of Art, and, and, and I must paraphrase, he writes, The real function of art is to express feeling and to transmit understanding. The ancient Greeks realized this as when Aristotle said that the purpose of drama is to purge our emotions. What we find in a genuine work of art is not an excitation of our emotions, but rather peace, repose, and equanimity. An artwork arouses certain physical reactions inside us when we become conscious of qualities such as rhythm, harmony, and unity, yet these qualities do not agitate our nerves, but rather they soothe them. Our contemplation of an artwork results in an emotional experience, which is not necessarily the same emotion that the artist experienced personally when he created the artwork, but rather an understanding that the artist was able to use their special talents to put these qualities together in a way that conveyed a message, a message that may even take the heat out of our emotional problems. Considering this important aspect, if our leaders, institutions, and if our governments are failing us, then the real status of art in our society becomes clear. On this point, Reed reminds us that the ancient Greeks were wiser than we are today in their belief that beauty is moral goodness, which for him was a very simple truth. For Reed, the only sin is ugliness, ugliness and that if we truly believe this, then all other activities of the human spirit would take care of themselves. As such, Reed believed that art is so much more significant than economics or even philosophy in that art is the direct measure 
of humanity's spiritual vision. Well, how does this fit in with the greater earth concept? Why is greater earth an art intervention and, and what is its purpose? Well, as earth is the only outpost of life in the universe that we know of, and our planet is already a special place and we are me and you are really lucky to be a part of this living system, without Earth's unique cosmic characteristics, we would not be here. We would not be contemplating our place and purpose in the cosmos. But knowing that life is apparently a rare and precious development, our responsibility as the dominant species on the planet is to take care of our precious cosmic home. If we understood and embraced that awareness, then the result should be that we will make Earth a greater place to live and to cherish. Looking around our immediate cosmos, we have come to realize that the Earth is the most beautiful planet that we have so far discovered because it is alive and life is indeed everything. So let's become overwhelmed by its beauty and Try to think of our home as, a, as our home planet as a work of art, a work of art in progress, and let's work together to make it even more beautiful. If we do so responsibly, life from Earth may survive the uncertain times ahead, and hopefully it will survive indefinitely. Well, on that note, I've made a new fine art print, which you can find in the art funding section. It is simply the word Earth written like this. Let's make Earth an artwork. We are all artists, Terra artists. This has been Communication 17003. Thank you for watching. Goodbye for now.